Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a really nice puzzle. A quartic equation that is a special type of equation, which I'm going to talk about. So we have x to the fourth plus the quantity x plus 1 to the fourth equals 3. And we're going to solve for x values. I'll be presenting two methods. And if you know of a third one, please let us know in the comment section down below. There's also another channel that you can check out if you like complex numbers, or even if you don't like complex numbers, maybe you'll start liking them. Go ahead and check out A plus BI, where I focus on complex numbers. And always feel free to suggest problems in the comment section down below. There's a form as well, but this is the easiest and fastest way to do that. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve a quartic like this. This probably made some people think like, what? What are you talking about? Like, this problem is too hard. It's a quartic. We have a formula, but that's too complicated. Well, we can talk about a couple of different things here. So here's the first method. I'm going to go ahead and expand it, obviously. Right? This is going to give me x to the fourth, 4x cubed, plus 6x squared, plus 4x, plus 1 equals 3. Great. Now, x to the fourth plus x to the fourth is 2x to the fourth, plus 4x cubed, plus 6x squared, plus 4x, and then 1 minus 3 is negative 2, so I can write it like this. Uh-oh, I can divide everything by 2. x to the fourth plus 2x cubed plus 3x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Now, we can go ahead and use the formula like I said earlier, but check it out on Wikipedia. It's a horrible, horrible formula. I don't think anybody wants to use that. I mean, there are probably shorter versions. I don't know if there's a trigonometry version because there's one for the cubics, but uh, quintics, there's no formula. Again, I repeat, there's no quintic formula. Okay, so to be able to solve this, here's what I'm thinking. Maybe I can go ahead and turn this into a perfect square and that would be awesome. So one thing that I can do is I can actually go ahead and try a couple different things, such as this one. I can isolate this and put everything else, these two terms, put everything else on the right-hand side. Now, I want the left-hand side to be a perfect square, right? How do I make it a perfect square? Well, think about it. This is x squared. This is 2 times x squared times x. So if you think about a squared plus 2ab plus b squared, this is your b. So you need to add x squared. Make sense? Okay, that's how you break it down. So I'm supposed to add x squared to both sides, and that'll partially do the trick. Not completely, of course. But the left-hand side will be a perfect square. What is it going to be? x squared plus x quantity squared. That's a method that I learned from my DFN, by the way. Thank you very much for that. Now, this is what I have so far. Now, this is partially good because the left-hand side is a perfect square, but the right-hand side isn't too bad, right? So we're halfway there, maybe. But we can still do this, add something to both sides while keeping the left-hand side a still perfect square, but the right-hand side also becomes a perfect square. And wouldn't that be perfect? I mean, we live in a perfect world, right? So here's how you can do it. You take that quantity, and then to this, you add 2k multiplied by x squared plus x, plus k squared. Let me tell you why. Think of this as y. So now what we have is y squared. So we're adding to y squared 2ky plus k squared, and that makes it y plus k squared. Does that make sense? In this case, y is x squared plus x. So this is like 2ky plus k squared. You get the idea? Once you get the idea by, by being able to see these kinds of patterns, uh, you can do lots of problems that are similar. But that's basically the whole idea. That's what we're going to add to both sides. And once you do that, of course, you have to do it on both sides. So I'm going to take this expression on the right-hand side and add the same thing. What did I add to both sides? I added this and this. So I'm going to add the same thing here, plus 2k x squared plus x plus k squared. Let's go ahead and clean it up a little bit, and then we'll put it all together. But notice that the left-hand side is y squared plus 2ky plus y k squared, which is, let me clean this up, it looks ugly, 2ky plus k squared, which is y plus k squared. I do this substitution because substitution is awesome. 
So use it all the time. Now replace y with what it is. It is x squared plus x plus k squared. So that's what you have on the left hand side from here and here. So now on the right hand side, you have this expression right here, right? So how do we simplify that? To simplify, we're going to put together the terms with x squared, terms with x, and the constants. So we're going to make it a full quadratic, right? Let's do it. We have 2kx squared minus 2x squared. So that is like 2k minus 2x squared. And then we have 2kx minus 2x, so that's like 2k minus 2, which again is the same number, and that's meaningful. I'll tell you why. And then plus k squared plus 1. Beautiful. Now, here's one thing you need to pay attention to. You want the right-hand side to be a perfect square. So there's a couple ways to go about it. And again, thanks to Nadia Fan, I was able to, uh, you know, I, was, I got a better understanding of this. Obviously, I learned a lot from my viewers and audience. And thank you very much for your contributions and keep it up. So here's what we can do. We can go ahead and look at the discriminant on the right-hand side. Delta needs to be zero if this quadratic is a perfect square. But that means I'm going to find discriminant, which is b squared minus 4ac, which is going to give me a cubic, right? I don't want to solve a cubic. If this problem appeared on math competitions, very likely, right? Obviously. And it did. Something similar definitely did. And I think this one did too. I don't know which one because I, I don't even know where I got it from. I just take notes, put them in a notebook, and then I just pick from there. So here's what we're thinking. In order for the right-hand side to be a perfect square, you're looking for something that is a perfect square, like one, okay? Or four, or nine, or 16, or even one-fourth will work. But look at this. You have the same thing, right? When does that happen? Okay, let me tell you. When they are both four or one-fourth. For example, if you have four x squared plus four x plus one, this is a perfect square because it's 2x plus, one, 2x plus 1 squared. So can that be 4? In order for that to be 4, 2k minus 2 needs to be 4, which means k needs to be a 3. But if k is a 3, then... If k is a 3, hmm, then this will be 10. It's not good because 4x squared plus 4x plus 10 is not a perfect square. That's not good. So 4 didn't work. Is 9 going to work? Probably not. Uh, you can keep trying. Like if it is 9, 11 over 2, 11 over 2 squared plus 1, that'll be 121 over 4 plus 1. That is 125 over 4. That's not good either. So maybe we should look for a fraction. How about this? Uh, 2k minus 2 can be 1. Then k would be 3 halves. And if you square 3 halves, that'll be 9 fourths plus 1 would be 13 fourths. Hmm. Does that work? Probably not. So I'm not really getting anything easy from here. Maybe it'll be 1 fourth. Let me try 1 fourth. If 2k minus 1 is 1 fourth, 2k would be 9 fourths and k would be 9 eighths. Okay, for 9 eighths, I'm going to get 1 fourth, 1 fourth. And what should it be followed by? 1 half of x plus 1 half, I think, right? Uh, 1 fourth squared 1 16th. Mm, I'm not sure if it's going to work. Anyways, at least I tried. So let's go ahead and solve the cubic and find the k, k value. But this wasn't my goal. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'm probably missing a very easy solution, by the way, at the moment. But anyways, I'm going to proceed with the second method because first method I got stuck. Too bad. Now, with the second method, we're going to, I'm going to introduce a really, really cool way of approaching problems like this because you can generalize this. And actually, there is a book that was written in Russian, which I found uh, you know, copy of, but it's amazing. I'll show you. So if you have an equation like this, and this is the general form, right? If you have an equation like this, here's what you need to do. Average x plus a and x plus b, right? And that'll be x plus half of a plus b, obviously. This will be your new variable. Does that make sense? I hope it does. I'll show you why this works. Okay, let's clean this area and look at why this works, but that's the general form. Think about it and take notes maybe. Oops, sometimes the eraser won't erase. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do this. 
average these two terms. That'll be x plus 1 half, and that'll be your new variable y. In other words, you're replacing x with y minus 1 half. Because what it does from symmetry is, this will be y minus 1 half, and this will be y plus 1 half. And boom, you can take advantage of the binomial theorem, right? Those are kind of conjugates, maybe? Okay, if you expand it now, things are going to be real cool. You're going to get y to the fourth, and then minus 4 times y cubed times 1 half, plus 6 y squared 1 fourth, minus 4y once eighth, and then plus 14641, it should be the last term, 1 over 16. This is the, uh, uh, the alternating one, and then the next one is going to be with all plus signs, and guess what? A lot of terms are going to cancel out, and then we're going to get something super duper nice. Okay, this is not necessarily the shortest method, but I think it's more elegant in my opinion. Again, you get to decide. But notice that these terms cancel. I don't even have to simplify them. And what I get from here is just amazing, I think. 2y to the fourth, and this will become 3 halves, but when you double, it's going to be 3. And this will become 1 eighth equals 0. And guess what? This is a biquadratic. Beautiful. So you can go ahead and set y squared equal to u. That'll give you 2u squared, if it's your birthday, it's 2u times u, so happy birthday to u. And then that'll be 3u plus 1 eighth equals 0, and that's quadratic. We can solve it with the quadratic formula. If you don't like fractions, go ahead and multiply by uh, 8, but I don't think it's necessary, or eventually we're going to do it anyways. Negative b, or we should, should we do it? Yeah, let's just do it. 16u squared plus 24u plus 1 equals 0. And then from here, you can even try this. Uh, you can just write this as 4u squared plus 6 times 4u. And this is 4u, by the way, this method. All these are 4u. And now you can call this t. t squared plus 6t plus 1 equals 0. A lot of substitution. I love it. And then you can kind of replace, uh, I mean, isolate this and add 9 to both sides to complete the square. This will become 8. And this will become t plus 3 squared equals 2 root 2 squared. If you square root, we use the absolute value. You're going to get a plus minus 2 root 2. And roots are going to be negative 3 plus minus 2 root 2. Of course, t is for you. So t is for you, okay? t works for you. Now, from here, we can find u, which is negative 3 plus minus 2 root 2 divided by 4. But we're not looking for you. We're looking for other, other people, okay? So uh, what is u then? Uh, u is y squared, and set is equal to y squared, and you should get the y values from you. But guess what? y squared can also be negative. Uh-oh, that's not good from a real number perspective. And this channel is not about complex numbers because I have another channel, as you know. A plus bi, did you know that? If not, go ahead and check it out. But yes, that's where I focus on complex numbers. But I can still show you what it looks like. But if I go with the positive solution first, and I don't even know if this is going to have a... By the way, you can check this. This is square root of 9, this is square root of 8, and this is still not good because both values are negative. And is that expected? Hmm. Yeah, you can have four complex solutions to a quartic equation. Too bad, right? Okay, that's why solving this is a real challenge. Don't you think? You can't guess and check. Probably very hard. But here's what I would like to say. If I had, theoretically speaking, if I had something like this, could I manage to solve it? By the way, this is not the same problem. Just don't get stuck. Uh, this is root 2 plus 1 squared divided by 4, and that would be just awesome, right? But don't worry, we can still write it as the square of something, because what happens here is, basically, you're looking at, instead of root 2 plus 1, you're basically, oops, I meant to say root 2 plus 1 squared, you get 2, I think you're looking at a complex number here. Okay, how do you square root this number? Anyways, if you square root, you'll get the solutions. <laughs> I'm going to leave it for you. Because this brings us to the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.